Hey, what's up? Welcome to Gear 3.14. In mechanical design of objects, when you want to know if an object can withstand a certain force or the deflection of an object under a certain uh, applied force, one of the most important material properties to understand is the elastic modulus, sometimes called Young's modulus. And what the elastic modulus tells you is a material's ability to resist elastic deformation under either an applied compressive load or an applied tensile load. The elastic modulus of a material is unique to that material. So the elastic modulus of uh, aluminum is different than the elastic modulus of foam. And it is an intrinsic property to these materials. So it has nothing to do with the shape of the material. So you can see that uh, this piece of foam, I can easily crush it in my hand. Therefore, it has a very low Young's modulus, whereas this block of aluminum, no matter how hard I, I squeeze it, I can't do anything noticeable to it. And it has a very high elastic modulus. If you were to take a metallic specimen and apply a stress to it and measure the corresponding strain, stress being the force divided by the area, and strain being the change in length of the specimen divided by its original length. And you plotted those results with stress being on the vertical axis and strain being on the horizontal axis, you would get a graph that looks like this. This graph has two distinct regions to it. It has a straight region and a not straight region. This, this straight region is known as the linear elastic region of a material. And what the elastic modulus is, is the slope of this linear elastic region. So what it tells you is if you apply a certain stress to a material, you will get a certain strain in the material. And if the material is linear elastic, and you know its dimensions, and you know its elastic modulus, you can use Hooke's law to determine the stress in the material. Or, if you know the stress in the material already, and you, and you want to know the change in length, you can determine the change in length of the material. So now I want to show you a quick example that uh, demonstrates the difference of this linear elastic region and this, what they call, plastic region right here. So stick with me. A material's elastic limit is the condition where after a stress is applied and then released, the material returns back to its original position. Plastic deformation of a material is when a stress is applied and then released, the material does not return to its original position. Hooke's law is only valid for the elastic deformation range of a material. Once you start getting into the plastic deformation range, things get a little more complicated. The unit for elastic modulus is stress, which is force per unit area. So in English units, that would be PSI, and in metric units, that would be Pascals. Here are some typical values of elastic modulus. For steel, it's 200 gigapascals. For aluminum, it's 70 gigapascals. And nylon, it's 3 gigapascals. I hope I did a good job explaining the elastic modulus to you. Thank you for watching.